Hello there classy people, this is Josh the Top Hat Gamer, and this week I'm reviewing Yoshi's Woolly World. While the Wii U is certainly not doing the best out of the three big consoles, it's hard to argue that its lineup of exclusive games isn't impressive. Yoshi's Woolly World is the latest Wii U exclusive, but does it reach the same heights as Super Mario 3D World, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, or Bayonetta 2? Let's take a look. Yoshi's Woolly World is set on Craft Island, the handmade home to the Yarn Yoshis. One day, while all the Yoshis are busy yucking it up, the evil sorcerer Kamek reduces all of them to bundles of wool, which he then proceeds to steal. His kidnapping sack is too small, however, and he drops this wonder wool all across Craft Island's many worlds. It's up to the two remaining Yoshis to save their woolen brethren and knit them back to normal. While it is a step up from the Mario style of let's go save the princess, the story isn't overly complex, but works as an excuse to trek across the many themed lands of Craft Island. The revelations regarding why the Yoshis were unraveled and kidnapped are suitably silly, and the game's tone overall is super cute and happy, especially when you consider that, for the most part, you're unraveling your enemies and throwing their remains at their friends. If it weren't for the cheerful atmosphere, I might consider Yoshi history's greatest monster. But it's fine, they yarn, it's, it's okay. The extremely adorable tone is achieved through Woolly World's yarn-heavy aesthetic, as well as its incredibly laid-back soundtrack. The handcrafted look has been done by games before, but Yoshi's Woolly World's look is more cohesive than the jumble of Little Big Planet's real-world objects, and more fleshed out than Kirby's epic yarn's simplistic approach. It also provides a nice spin on otherwise rote settings found in most platformers like the obligatory ice, fire, and jungle worlds. The bright color palette and kid-friendly aesthetic hides a surprising amount of detail, like the frayed material in the outside of Yoshi's yarn body, or the way that each enemy gets tied up when you hit them with a ball of wool, instead of just jumping off screen. It's evident that a lot of love was poured into this project. The soundtrack that accompanies the adorable textile visuals sounds super upbeat and happy, and most levels, with the exception of maybe boss fights and time challenges, feel incredibly relaxing. There's a nice mix of laid-back beats and jazzy tunes, but the sound design lets itself down a bit with the overuse of Yoshi's various noises. Look, I get it. Yoshis don't speak in the traditional sense, but you'll be throwing a lot of yarn and performing the flutter jump again and again, and while Yoshi sounds really cute at the outset, the noises wear thin pretty quickly, and he makes a noise every time he does anything. Yoshi's annoying effort grunts wouldn't be an issue if the game wasn't a great deal of fun, causing me to play on and on and on. Yoshi's Woolly World packs up its solid visual design with responsive, entertaining platforming that fans of prior Yoshi games should find familiar. Yoshi returns with its signature flutter jump, as well as the ability to swallow and repurpose enemies into projectiles. Because everything is yarn, you can use your enemies to recreate platforms and other environmental elements to help you with your platforming efforts. The base platforming is really enjoyable. The controls are responsive, and for the most part, levels can be traversed at a nice, smooth pace. Jumping doesn't feel particularly floaty, unless you're utilizing Yoshi's flutter jump and though this ability can take a little getting used to, it provides a satisfying boost to your standard jump. It can be abused, however, as you can flutter more than once per jump, often maintaining your position in midair if you misread a timed jump. This removes a lot of the challenge from certain sections. I must say, I'm honestly surprised by the amount of new mechanics and concepts that are introduced throughout the course of the game. Yoshi's Woolly World starts out pretty stock standard. Jump over chasms, eat guys, throw them at other guys, jump on the other other guys, and then win the level. Later on, you're introduced to curtains you can climb, throwable creatures that create walkways with their cloud feathers, and even moving velcro strips that you can stick to and jump off of. And a lot of these mechanics only show up for one level. It helps to keep things fresh, but I can't help but think certain mechanics could have used a bit more time in the spotlight. The transformation sections that make a return from Yoshi's Island could have used a bit more screen time as well, but the content on offer is still pretty decent. The motorbike sections feel fast, the mermaid transformations feel suitably loose to control, and they even put a little fun shoot 'em up in there with airplane transformations. They do a decent job to break up the platforming action, even though the base game is constantly adding new elements and changing itself to keep itself fresh. Alongside the constant introduction of new elements, the game also throws a steady stream of bosses at you. Most of the bosses are bigger, better versions of standard enemies, and they're generally pretty fun. There are a couple of fights that are just rematches of earlier bosses, but the strategy to beat them always changes, and there are always plenty of new bosses to take on as well. Both the boss fights and the platforming levels are fairly approachable for the majority of the game, but for the last 10 levels or so, the difficulty level spikes unexpectedly. 
It's still doable, but the clearly younger target audience might find these last few stages to be a bit too much. I even found myself getting annoyed near the end, though this might be due to the introduction of less linear maze-like levels that feel much slower and far less fun in my opinion. It doesn't help when you're trying to find the game's various collectibles either. The collectibles in Yoshi's Woolly World do help to pad out the game a little more, and unlike in Mario games where the giant coins only unlock extra levels, you have flower coins that act in a similar way, on top of the wonder wall that allows you to re-knit your Yoshi brethren. Once you collect all five in a level, you gain access to new Yoshi skins, making the collectibles far more worthwhile in my eyes. Even if you're not planning on collecting anything, the game packs in a solid amount of content, with at least 48 levels available to you, as well as a boss 10 that opens when you complete the game. There's a lot to be said about Yoshi's Woolly World. It looks amazing with a surprisingly detailed textiles based style, its music rocks back and forth between upbeat jazzy tunes and laid back tracks that give the game a joyous atmosphere, and its gameplay is solid and ever changing. On the other hand, Yoshi's own sound effects wear thin really quickly, and for a lot of the game there isn't much challenge to be found. Until there is, and then it goes a bit overboard. Yoshi's Woolly World gets the Top Hat Gamer rating of excellent. Even if you strip back the bright, memorable visual style and the fitting soundtrack, Yoshi's Woolly World would still provide a solid platformer that stays fresh for the duration. When you have that super upbeat visual and audio style, however, the entire package is joy incarnate and provides a fun time that is accessible for all. Wii U owners, this is another excellent exclusive for the system, and if you've been waiting for a solid platformer to buy into Nintendo's little console that could, well, there's already plenty, but this meets that criteria really well. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the review informative. If you missed last week's review on Batman Arkham Knight, or want to catch up on some of last week's gaming news, click the annotations. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go break my enemies down and throw their remains at their loved ones.